As an atheist, I've been told countless times that I should read the Bible. So that's what I'm doing. Maybe something in this book will convince me that there is a God. Or maybe I'll just point out some of the silly things that are written in there. Join me as we take a look at Genesis chapter 8 and find out some more about the tale of Noah and that completely believable story of the global flood. Hello, I'm the Skeptic, the British floating circle that sometimes reads the Bible and reacts to what's inside. If I'm to understand what believers say about the Bible, it's only right that I read it myself. And since I'm surrounded by folks that read the terribly written King James Version... It's only right I start there. However, before we start today's video, if you've seen some of my content before, do the things with the buttons. That would be sublime. And a super thanks to all those that hit super thanks over the last few videos. John Steinat, Chris Reese, Brandon Connell, Sir Ranma Saltzalot, The Tinfoil Freak, Quadruplex, William M, Mike Mr. Bear and Roger Wenzel. Lisa the Rainbow Giraffe bestows leaves upon you all. More hen. This is an atheist's reaction to Genesis chapter 8, but first I'm going through the entire chapter. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged, the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained and the waters returned from off the earth continually and after the end of the hundred and fifty days the waters were abated and the ark rested in the seventh month on the seventeenth day of the month upon the mountains of ararat and the waters decreased continually until the tenth month in the tenth month on the first day of the month were the tops of the mountain seen. And it came to pass at the end of forty days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. And he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand, and took her, and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth, and he stayed yet other seven days, and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass, in the six hundredth and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering off the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl, and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful, and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him, every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth, after their kinds, went forth out of the ark. And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, neither will I again smite any more everything living, as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Well, what a letdown. My favourite Bible story is so weird. Here's what I think about each verse. And God remembered Noah 
and every living thing, and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth, and the waters assuaged. Wait a second. Did God forget about Noah? What was he doing? You know when you leave the house and then suddenly you remember you left the oven on? Was the God making something else happen on another planet and then it went, Oh, damn it, I left the faucet on back on Earth. I mean, that would explain a lot. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. This magic water that suddenly vanished, well, where did it all go? There's no way that the actual amount of water it would have taken to cover the entire earth just vanished underground. Because if it did, then it would have just gone there in the first place and there wouldn't have been a flood. And also, it would have actually been found. You know, some sciencey folk would have gone, Oh, there's all that flood water. And the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. So it was well over the 40 days and 40 nights that everyone actually knows. I was only ever taught 40 days and 40 nights, but I was taught it as a story, not as the truth. And we still don't know where this water went. And the ark rested in the seventh month on the 17th day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. Finally, some details. Ararat, a dormant volcano in Turkey. Turkey, a place that is currently mostly Muslim. Also Turkey, a creature found in America that can't swim as far as I'm aware. And no turkey fossils have ever been found anywhere outside of the Americas, from what I can tell. So how on earth did the 14 turkeys, since they were clean, right, make it all the way back to America? And the waters decreased continually until the 10th month. In the 10th month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountain seen. When did these months start? They, they being the folks that wrote all this, could have said May 8th was when it started. Then at least we'd have a reference. And this water is very slow draining. And it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. One tiny window on a giant boat. Now, I know how much I eat and produce afterwards, so I know how gross this next bit will be, but if there was only one window on that massive boat, there wouldn't have been enough ventilation for all those hundreds of thousands of creatures pooping and farting everywhere. And I'm sorry to take this down to a level where we're discussing bodily functions, but 150 days of that much gas and excrement not going anywhere would have created enough to drown everything and everyone in a sea of poop. Right? Surely, right? And he sent forth a raven, which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. As a carrion bird, surely the raven would have been overjoyed to be sent out to go and feast on all the dead things from the earth. That was not a smart move, Noah. Perhaps the god should have given you a heads up on that. The raven's hardly going to let you know that there's any land out there when it's got all that access to free food. The second it tells you the coast is clear... You're going to go out there and clean up its free food. Also, he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the ground. Out of all the birds he could have chosen, he picked a raven and a dove. I would have chosen something with a bit more smarts, like, a, I don't know, African grey or an Amazon parrot. But I guess they didn't know about Amazon parrots back then because, you know, their world was incredibly tiny. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put forth his hand and took her and pulled her in unto him into the ark. Well, then that would cancel out verse 5, which said the mountaintops were seen. That's still land, Phil Collins. It's taken me this long to put together that this is Genesis and Phil Collins is that drumming gorilla from Genesis or something like that. And he stayed yet other seven days and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. Another seven days worth of food, another seven days of gas and excrement building up that could only be ventilated out of a tiny little square. And the dove came into him in the evening and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off so Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. Hang on! If an olive tree was under water for over 150 days, no light, no air, probably slightly salty water, how on earth did it survive? How on earth did any vegetation survive? Maybe seaweed? But this specifically said an olive leaf, so no, not a chance! 
And he stayed yet other seven days and sent forth the dove which returned not again unto him any more. Well, it probably flew into a patio door. Birds are always doing that. And it came to pass in the six hundredth and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. Oh, right. Whilst methane is non-toxic, it is highly flammable. I guess the quickest way for Noah to remove the cover from the ark that took him a hundred years to build is to light a match and blow the lid off. And in the second month, on the seventh and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. There has to be a timeline of all this, surely, because it's jumping about all over the place. In the second month and the twenty-seventh day, but from when? And the earth may well have dried, but there'd be nothing but rotten animal and plant matter. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Well, wait, why does this sentence need its own verse? Go forth off the ark, thou and thy wife, and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee. Hang on, why did we need the whole bird flying out to check? Couldn't Noah have just waited for the God to say, Yo, Noah, the coast is clear. Did Noah just not trust the God to tell the truth? It's funny how some things need a God and some things require some ideas of their own. I know, I'll send a dove out to find a leaf. I'll blow the roof off of the ark with the methane build-up, but I won't leave until given permission. Bizarre. Bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. If ever there's a story in the book of giraffism that involves replenishing the earth with life, spoiler alert, there isn't as yet, then Lisa the rainbow giraffe, leaf be upon her, will assure there's a large enough population that breeding will be sustainable. Two of every creature is not going to do it, especially with creatures that have exceedingly long gestation periods. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his son's wives with him. Just in case you'd forgotten who the eight people on the ark were, every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds went forth out of the ark. And how good that the predators let their prey get back to their homes before eating them. They'd already been on the ark for well over 150 days. What's a few more weeks of returning to the place that they came from going to hurt? And Noah builded an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Wait just a minute. As the animals were leaving, Noah took one of every clean beast and fowl and burned them. So instead of seven pairs of each, there are only six and a half poor creatures. Thank goodness he didn't mistake an unclean creature for a clean one and kill off one of them. Unless that's how lovers of the story explain extinction, the dinosaurs aren't around anymore because Noah accidentally put up a T-Rex as an offering to the god. Also, the past tense of build is built, not builded. And the Lord smelled a sweet savour, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. What is wrong with this god? The smell of thousands of burning animal corpses is sweet. Maybe you thought, I'll never have to smell this again if I never wipe out all of humanity. Maybe I shouldn't do that again. I tell you what, G-Man, it seems like a bit of an overkill to have done it in the first place. Though actually, I'm not at all convinced this ever happened. Still, while the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Well, that's just pointing out the obvious. I can't believe the story of Noah has been stretched out this much. I can't believe people really think this happened. I definitely need to get a free pass into the Ark Encounter here in Kentucky to see how accurate all this really is. Speaking of the Ark Encounter, it took flood damage a while ago, but recently was struck by lightning. Is their God angry at them getting it so wrong? Or was it just a coincidence and God doesn't exist? I'm looking forward to Genesis being over. Maybe this is why theists don't read the Bible. It's pretty lame. I'm going to skip tick Genesis chapter 8 as more ridiculousness that may have once just been a cool story, bro. A big thank you to this month's ticks on Patreon, MISM, Addy Rockart, The Enixes, Travis, Elizabeth, Jukari, and The Absolute Lunatic Jimmy, as well as all the base ticks. You can become a supporter on Patreon too at patreon.com slash the skeptic. The link is in the description along with links to all my other socials. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. From me, the skeptic, stay safe, keep thinking logically and ask questions. Skepticism is the first step towards truth. See you next Saturday.